Hey, welcome to Offshore Audio. I'm Andrew, a live sound engineer, and I'm here to help you mix better live events. I had a request some time ago to cover a little bit about stage power, how to know how much you can connect to a certain outlet and whether you should have your monitor speakers on a different outlet from your back line and why that might be. Now, I've avoided talking about this for some time because I am not an electrician. Uh, I didn't even take physics in high school and I've never wanted to give anyone any bad advice. So with that in mind, take this with the caveat that I am not an expert on this subject. I'm just someone who has worked on stages. I want to share with you what I know and I don't want to not answer a question that someone had for me when I can certainly give my take on it. Always contact an electrical professional if you're messing with electricity beyond plugging something into an outlet. And if you're unsure about anything, contact an electrical professional. If you're just getting started mixing live shows, then I think you should check out my three-step guide to Perfect EQ. It's just a PDF document that takes you through the three steps that I use to make my EQ decisions in every show and every situation. And you can get access to that by just heading to offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or by clicking the link in the description down below. So go check that out for a quick win on getting better EQ. But without further ado, let's dive in. So in this video, we're going to talk about power distribution, how it comes in, where it goes, calculating how much something takes, how much something draws all of your allotted amount of power. And we'll look at a little example of why you might want to have monitor speakers on a different sort of circuit from your backline. So let's talk about distribution. Power is different everywhere in the world, but I guess the building blocks are the same. There is a voltage which your power system runs at. For example, here in Norway, it's 230 volts. I think in the US, it's 120 volts. And that comes into play a little later with calculation. But there's also current, which is sort of how much electricity is flowing through your connections at that point in time. Something draws current. When you connect an amplifier up, it draws current from the electrical supply. I'm not gonna get into this, not a physics professor, but I'll get into the practicalities. It comes in and the current is super, super high, right? Let's say it's 128 amps, amps being what we measure current in. That comes into the building at a certain point and we split that and take it to different points. So our 128 is split down into 264s, right? And these numbers are arbitrary. It might be different where you are in the world, but this is what it's like here. So you split into 264s and then that'll go to power cabinets somewhere like a power cupboard. What do you call that? I forgot the English word for it. Power cupboard, circuit board, circuit breaker. Anyway, so it goes to a place where it is then broken down further into several other circuits. Now, of these 264s, you might find that half of the current is allocated to the rest of the venue, bar, lighting, that sort of thing. And the other 64 is allocated to the stage. Here in Norway, a regular socket, an outlet on the wall, runs at 16 amps. It's got a maximum draw of 16 amps. So that would mean, since we have 64 amps available at the circuit breaker for the stage, that we can have four separate 16 amp circuits, which we can connect things to. So that's four independent lines of power. Think of it like that. Think of it as four channels on your sound mixer. You know, like you could use a Y splitter to connect several microphones to one input channel on a mixer, right? But your gain would still max out at the same point. So if you're putting twice as much in, there's still only the same capacity on this one channel. Now, if you're working for a large PA company and you're going into large empty venues and you might be bringing your own power distribution. And so you might find that that 128 that I talked about earlier is available at one point on the wall for you to connect your distribution to. And then your distribution might separate that out into four 16 amp courses or to 32 amp courses or however it is then subdivided and sent on. Did I say courses? I meant circuits. They say courses in Norwegian. So think of it like a stream, right? Think of it like a river. Think of it like a backwards river. So you've got your large main river flowing into the venue, which is then split down into larger streams, one of which goes to the stage, one of which goes to the rest of the venue. And then your stage side is also split into further streams in this example for 16 amp streams, which add up to 
one 64 amp stream. So let's talk about calculating how much we're using. Because on each one of these individual circuits, we can use a maximum of 16 amps. We need to know how much each piece of equipment is drawing in amps when we connect it to the power supply. In theoretical thinking, if you had four guitar amplifiers and each of them drew five amps, then you would only be able to connect three of them before you tripped the circuit breaker, right? Because the first one would be five amps, the second one would take 10, the third one would be 15, but the fourth one would push us over our maximum allocation of 16 amps, and that would then trip the breaker. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's the holistic view of it. So we need to know how much each piece of equipment draws. Sometimes this is printed on power supplies and you can just look and it says that it takes one amp and you know that, great, it takes one amp. Other times you have wattage, which you can then convert into amps. So let's look at an example of a guitar amplifier, right? It's quite normal to get a 50 watt guitar amplifier. The amount of current that that guitar amplifier draws from the available supply is dependent on how hard we drive the amplifier. But let's calculate for the maximum draw just for the sake of this example and to be on the safe side. So we need to know the power rating of the amplifier, 50 watts, and we need to know the voltage of the electrical system in that country. In the United States, let's go with 120 volts because no one lives in Norway, it's like 5 million people. So 50 watt guitar amplifier into 120 volt power supply. To find how much current that draws, you take the wattage and you divide it by the voltage. So we take 50 watts and then we divide it by 120 volts. And that gives us the answer in amps of 0.42 amps. So we know that this guitar amplifier whacked up to maximum, in theory, would draw 0.42 amps. Let's have a think about the stage as a whole then, right? Just talking about sound equipment here, not even thinking about lighting. We've got these amplifiers, let's call it two amplifiers because it's a band. So they're taking up, what What did I say? 0 0.84 amps for two of them, okay? Let's take a bass guitar amplifier. Let's call it a 500 watt bass guitar amplifier. We run that into the equation again, that's 500 watts divided by 120, gives us an answer of 4.17 amps, right? See where this is going? We're already over five amps now. Add in a couple of synthesizers. A couple of profit synthesizers takes up 1.2 amps. That's 0.6 amps each. You get that information from the power supply. Pedal boards have a pretty low draw, so let's call it one amp for the pedal boards. And already we've used up half of our 16 amp allocation for one of our circuits, right? Now let's really get crazy and start throwing in active monitors. So if I look up a QSC K10, powered speaker, right, that I can connect up to the mains and use as a monitor speaker. Let's say we're gonna use four of them. Now, it gets a little complicated here with speakers because speakers are rated in watts. For example, these speakers are rated at 1000 watts, but that's not the number that we use for this calculation because that's not the draw. That Because when you run that calculation, it takes an obscene amount of current and that's not how it works in practicality. So it's much better to actually just Google or look in the manual for the power draw of that speaker. And then we can find out by Googling it, it takes 1.9 amps for one of those speakers. So four of those speakers is nearly eight amps. Now you can see that if everything was going full blast with four speakers going full blast, you might run the possibility of tripping the circuit breaker if you had everything on one circuit. Now, I've exaggerated a bit, and these guitar amplifiers and bass amplifiers are never going to draw that much power. But you see where I'm going, where you can use these calculations to estimate how much you're going to draw and make a decision about, yeah, okay, do I want to connect something there or not? In this particular instance, it might actually work okay. But if you were to connect your main PA to the same source as well, then you might really have a problem. So you might be able to say to yourself, okay, in this situation, I think I'm gonna chance it. I don't have anything else available, so I'm just gonna roll with it. But if someone else comes along and says, hey, do you mind if I plug my lights into your circuit that you're using for backlight? You can say, no. Similarly, in this example, my backline circuit was 16 amps, but in many places of the world, it might be as low as 10 amps. If you have a 10 amp circuit in this case, and you've connected up all your backline, you can't connect your speakers as well. You won't have enough current available. And that's why we have more than one circuit, so that we can connect speakers on one circuit, backline on another circuit, 
and so on. As we add more and more things, we need more and more current available for our equipment. In summary, big power comes in. You need to know the voltage of the system in your country. It's usually very high current when it comes in and gets lower as it's split down until eventually you get your wall sockets. You need to know what current is available at those wall sockets, at those power outlets. Check the power supplies or the documentation for equipment to find out how much current each piece of equipment draws, or simply divide the wattage of a piece of equipment by the voltage of the power system, and that will give you the answer of current in amps. Add all this together, and if it goes over the amp rating, the current rating of your outlets that you're connecting to, you will trip the breaker. Calculate for your sort of maximum use so that you know that in any case, you're on the safe side. But remember that speakers and amplifiers and things don't often run at 100% of their current draw. Always, always, always contact an electrical professional if you're unsure about anything. I am not an electrical professional, so this is purely for your information so that you have more of an awareness about the situation. How did I do? Was that helpful to you? Did you learn something? Do you know more than me about this? Please let me know, is there something that I've got wrong? Is there a different way that you think about it? Leave me a comment down below. Please let me know if this was helpful to you. It was really helpful for me to go out and try and learn more about this stuff as well. As always, if you're just getting started, please check out the three-step guide to Perfect EQ for a PDF guide that gives you three really clear steps that you can take to make better EQ decisions. You can get that at offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or in the link in the description down below. For now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.